Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Roundabout, uh, without a doubt one of the strangest games that I've played probably over the course of uh, my entire channel's lifespan, but uh, it tickles a lot of the spots that I like. Are you into cheesy 70s B-movie style stuff, even if it's uh, intentionally cheesy? Do you like movies like, say, Manos the Hands of Fate or Mystery Science Theater 3000 in general? Do you like to make fun of stuff that you know, is silly, despite the fact that it knows it's silly, well then, uh, there's a lot of stuff in Roundabout that might interest you. Wrapped in a, uh, a weirdly silly arcade game premise. Uh, this is $15 on Steam, I played about an hour and a half of it so far, which has me at 14.4% complete, but it's been like 20 minutes just kind of driving around, so... Uh, I'd, I'd probably be closer to a quarter of the way through the game if I had actually... Uh, made consistent progress. And one of the things that's interesting about this game is that it's got a lot of, like, FMV-style cutscenes. Uh, and it, it doesn't really take place in the 70s, but it has kind of like, you know, almost like a Black Dynamite-style uh, kind of cheesiness going on to it, if you're familiar with what that is. Uh, and a lot of the people that actually participate in the game are personalities within the game's industry. So Kate Welch, who you may know as She Geek Show, plays the part of Giorgio Manos, who is our driver. Uh, that's Shandana Ekanayaka, I hope I pronounced that correctly. He's uh, a producer at Uber Entertainment, Super Monday Night Combats, Planetary Annihilation, stuff like that. Eric Neustadter? Again, why is the most difficult names to pronounce, and this is coming from someone who has a French-Canadian last name, uh, you know, is in the game. He's a personality at Xbox Live, uh, and Psychedelic Eyeball, a fellow Let's Player, uh, was, uh, the, or is the voice of the main antagonist of the game. In any case, let's get started. I thought you'd be interested in knowing that, just because, uh, it's an interesting bit of trivia, and really, if you're buying the game, I don't mean this to sound insulting, but it's probably just as much for the story and kind of the audio-visual stuff and the, the cutscenes as it is for the actual gameplay. The gameplay, for better or worse, is pretty much what you're just seeing uh, right here. And I want to point out, by the way, just to, if you're familiar with uh, Dan Teasdale, this is a, a game that he helped design. He used to work at Twisted Pixel, so he worked on, you know, games with a heavy FMV leaning, like the Gunstringer, for example. Uh, but he left, um, he left Twisted Pixel recently and uh, joined, I, I'm not sure if he joined No Goblin, which is the company that made this, but uh, he, he helped design this game. So what the heck, uh, I'm just, I, the only reason I mention that is because there's a lot of kind of like overlapping elements between the presentation of something like, you know, the Gunstringer or Explosion Man or something like that, uh, and this. What the heck is, uh, is Roundabout all about? You've probably heard something about this game, you may not need me to explain it 100%, but I will as we kind of drive around here. Uh, Roundabout is a game in which you play as Giorgio Manos, the world's first revolving limo driver. So you just drive throughout, uh, this open world here. You could almost imagine it as, you know, a little bit Grand Theft Auto-esque. Uh, but the trick is that you revolve constantly, 100%. I will say that this is probably the only, like, top-down game I've ever played in my entire life that's given me motion sickness. Uh, but it, it's, you know mild motion sickness compared to something like Time Splitters, not that I'm trying to crap on Time Splitters or anything like that. So it is set up in kind of a similar structure to um, open world games like Grand Theft Auto, San, uh, Saints Row, etc, etc. I thought I was gonna say San Andreas. Don't worry, so did I. So we're gonna go around here and try to get a mission done. If you get hit like five times, you explode. There's places that you can repair yourself. Exploding, I believe it costs you your combo, uh, but the game is pretty lenient about, uh, you know, what it puts you through. So we're gonna be looking at our map down there at the bottom and trying to work our way towards our next mission because the missions are where you get those cutscenes and those cutscenes are oh, one of the uh, the things that uh, you know pays for the price of admission here. Let's work our way through here and you've, we've met, uh, oh geez, yeah I am really bad, just give me a second, I'm trying to get that sick jump token. Lots of collectibles, uh, you know, of varying difficulties to get. This red car is pissing me off. Pedestrians are, um, you know, something you can use to actually gain money, which you would use to unlock, uh, you know, other parts or hats or, you know, horns for your car and stuff like that. Seriously? You're gonna do me dirty like that? Constantly backing up and going forward Ford Mustang? Here we go, that, that's our next mission, but there is a uh, repair shop close by, so I just walked over there. Alright, let's get a cutscene here. Disco Sylvan, this is a new uh, personality for me. Hey, Cheese Weasel, I've gotta get down at the memorial. Memorial? It's so happening they haven't even built it yet. Go south. Alright, so every mission uh, with Just like one exception that I have played in Roundabout so far pretty much follows the same kind of, kind of criteria. Uh, you get... I'm not sure if we're supposed to be here. Oh, we get on this one, okay. 
You get a passenger. The passenger is a uh, colorful character who gives you a destination. That desti Getting to that destination requires you to drive in perhaps uh, a way that you might consider a little bit unsafe. There goes our combo, but we made five bucks doing that, which to be honest with you is actually a pretty okay payout. I'm just trying to figure out where we actually have to go here. I think we might have to stay on this one. I'm not 100% sure though. Um, usually it's a little bit more straightforward than jumping on a bunch of like weird pontoon boats here, but that's okay. I don't think we have to go that way. I think we have to go this way. Let's try to get on one of these when he comes back. Uh, and usually, you know, you, you try to keep your combo going as much as you possibly can. You, you go through, um, I don't know, maybe like a dozen checkpoints. And then when you get to the last one, they're like, thanks for doing that, and they give you some money as a result. We're getting as many tokens as we can on the way, because the tokens help you build your combo. If you hit those blue barrels, which is something, or blue tires, I should say, which is something we had to do right there, and then I still got myself killed and probably lost my combo as a result, um, you change directions, which is important because there are certain, oh jeez, there are certain sections that uh, you can only get through if you're turning in one specific way. There we go, I finally got that figured out. Um, watch out for these big poles here. No jokes about that diction, please. We missed a couple of tokens there, that's okay. You know, the game is, uh, puzzling is one way that I would describe it. Uh, so it is almost, it's not really as much of a driving game as it is, uh, a, a puzzle driving game, I think is how I, I saw Total Biscuit refer to it on his curation page. Let's see if we can fit through there. Okay, we made it. And now we can move onwards. This is actually, like, substantially harder than any mission I've had prior to it, but that's okay. We'll hit the end here and see what he has to say. You can clearly dig it. You're my new wingman. Giorgio and Disco Sylvan are gonna go far. So, probably right now, for the vast majority of you, you could, uh... Stop the video right here. You know right now whether or not you are into, uh, we'll pick up the supplier here. You know right now whether or not you're into, uh, what you're gonna see in Roundabout. It's that arcade veneer, yeah, that doesn't change. Sometimes you have to jump, sometimes uh, you don't have to jump. I, it starts out a little I, easier just going from like point A to point B, yeah, and it's all wrapped in this kind of like part. FMV B movie stuff. Which I'll shut up and let you hear. Uh, yeah, dude. Sweet. Parking garage. Alright, so that is, um... Hyde. I was going to say David Hyde Pierce. That is like completely the opposite. That's Hyde from that 70s show. Um, we're going to try to make sure these pedestrians can't hide from us as we work our way through here. Basically, it's a score attacky arcade game. You know, it almost reminds me of like a puppy game style thing. Puppy games make those like, or have historically at least made those um, arcade games, but like remapped and re skinned in kind of like this neon style. That's kind of how I feel about this is that it has some very like classic arcade style. Gameplay wrapped in a, a unique veneer that makes it more presentable for maybe a modern-day audience Which is totally fine. I haven't found myself, you know, loving roundabout as much as uh, a lot of people have But I can totally get down with its tone and actually another game that it's maybe a little bit more similar to uh, Than than might meet the eye is is something like goat simulator where I don't think the gameplay is the majority of the enjoyment It's kind of just the fact that it exists and is very silly that is the majority of the enjoyment if that makes sense oh god i can just read this take two and you'll feel like a psychedelic unicorn blasting off into space to me this means that we're probably going to have some kind of weird you know lsd trip here or something i'm glad i exploded there and uh as a result i will find myself getting motion sickness even worse we also have a power by the way and the power allows us to slow down time so that we can uh you know basically turn more effectively I don't end up using it all together that often. Uh, we're gonna try to get down here and do another mission. But yeah, it, it is, like, at its core, a very, very simplistic game. There are kind of deeper elements. Like, there's almost like an Assassin's Creed style, like, property buying. It's really more of a Grand Theft Auto property buying thing, if I'm honest about it, but maybe you'd be more familiar recently with the, the way that Assassin's Creed does it. Where you can buy properties, and then over time those properties will, will generate money that you can pick up. And what do you use your money for? Well, you use it to basically buy new hats for your car, you know? It, it, it's not a game that has RPG elements or anything like that, and I think that's probably for the best. But you can get a car that has, like, you know, gives your car... Sorry, you can get a hat that gives your car uh, waffles on top of it, for example. Why? Because that's just the kind of game this is. Uh, and, you know, it's the kind of thing that... Oh, man. I can totally imagine that, like, fully half or maybe even... Whoa, I didn't... There's a, we might as well see what the challenge is. But fully half or maybe even more of the people watching this video are probably like, This is dumb. I would not pay $15 for it. 
This is for the other 25% of you out there. I don't totally disagree with the 75% of you out there, by the way. As much as I can get down with kind of, you know, Birdemic style intentional cheesiness, and I really can, like, that kind of stuff is, is totally what I'm into. Like, I'm, uh, They Live is a, a major movie for me in my life. Big Trouble in Little China, The Room, I know they're not all cut from the same cloth, but you know, one of the inspirations for me starting my channel was Mystery Science Theater 3000. I totally get down with the tone of the game, it's, and that stuff is cool. That stuff works pretty well. It's the actual like gameplay of the game where I find myself being like, well, I'm only driving from point A to point B to see more cutscenes. So that's why I feel like it's maybe not the the most accessible complete package. But if you're if you're into this kind of weird arcadey style gameplay and you're into that mystery science three uh, mystery science theater three thousand stuff, then by all means, um, there's not much that should hold you back here. Dear chauffeur. The Roundabout Military is pleased to advise you of advanced weapons testing occurring in your area within the next 10 seconds. Not being killed by said advanced weaponry would be most appreciated. Love, General SS Bombsworth. Yeah, so occasionally in the game there are these challenges. Ah, oh, Brack, the man's got seven seconds here, so we're gonna have to beat that. Um, and try not to explode when we're already near exploding ourselves. Okay, just go. Um, I can't talk for a second, but we already beat Brack's record, so that's the only thing that really matters. Um, yeah, the the challenges are basically just for fun. I haven't seen them really give you monetary value, with the exception of you know what you earn while you're actually uh, doing it by by running over pedestrians and stuff like that. Uh, oh, jeez, just keep driving. But how? When I know they're the blood diamonds. Ooh, though they're thousands of miles away, Sierra alone compares to what we go through today. Why can't I get anything but Kanye West diamonds are forever stuck in my head? Okay. Diamonds from Sierra Leone. Sorry. My mistake after all that. Make a terrible reference like that. Uh, fire and rain. We got an achievement there, actually. I hope you can see that. That's pretty good. Yeah, we didn't get uh, any other value, like, progression-wise out of it, but it might have helped us with our overall progression in the game, but it didn't advance the, the story any. But it's kind of, like, fun optional stuff. There's other ones, like, uh, there was one that took place on like the baseball diamond and it was like hit baseballs or something like that and uh, there's one that was basically just run over as many people as you can and you have a meter and if you don't run over people uh, in time. Do we have any new of these unlocked? No, we don't. Uh, if you don't run over enough people in time and keep your meter filled then it eventually uh, you know runs out and you, you fail the challenge basically. It's just going as long as you possibly can. Let's see, we can do some property buying stuff. We can't actually buy that, it's a little bit too expensive for us right now. Uh, this is the second area in the game. Again, the, the Grand Theft Auto kind of comparisons work here. Um, you do start in like a, a bit of a smaller town and then things get expanded as time goes on. Take the pills, alright, here we go. I'm pretty confident that this may actually make me vom. We'll see. Hello, Giorgio. Okay. Jeffrey. Make no bones about it, I'm excited to see you! I'm already running behind in the roundabout triathlon. Quick, get me to the front of the pack! Just because I have no lungs Look, doesn't mean I'm water I'm a little Don't bit confused here, but I'm kind of into it. Let's come through here. Uh, thank god we got repaired. I knew there was gonna be some kind of drug sequence. Is it on top of this thing? Where am I supposed to go? Is it directly above us? I don't know if I can actually jump that high. I'm very confused about what's happening here. Okay. Let's pick this up. Try not to explode. I feel like I've accidentally put myself in like the hardest missions that I've seen in the game. Oh, I bet it's in this alley. Maybe not. Uh. But, I mean, that makes sense, considering, of course, you know, whenever I do the video is going to be the furthest I've gone. Okay, get this. Do we have to change our upgrade? Oh, we do. We need to get inflated boat. Okay, I understand where they're coming from now. I should probably read those text boxes that pop up on the screen, if I had to guess. And I imagine we're going to have to go in the water now. Okie dokie. What, what was there to be afraid of? It turns out we've uh, handled it just fine. What? I can't make the same joke twice? Tough crowd. Sneak through here. Oh my. My jangly legs are still so many places behind. Time to Alright, um 
but please do murder all runners. Now, you know, as a runner myself, I don't necessarily uh, feel comfortable with this. I'm just kidding. It's kind of fun. All right. There's more back here, apparently. Most triathlons, of course, are run on the beach. Do I have to, like... Oh, I, I had to hit that flag at the top of that there. I feel like I am just... Like, the, the game is short-circuiting my brain at the moment. Maybe it's not you? It's... That was... I, whenever I get stuck in that situation, I feel like that scene from the first Austin Powers movie. You know the one I'm talking about. Okay, run you over, run you over, and then, is it really like the exact same situation we had earlier? I am a little bit confused, maybe I still have my inflate boat active and I have to unactivate it? No, that is uh, absolutely not true, as far as I'm aware. You certainly don't just run into this thing. I swear to God that the whole time, this game has been so freaking straightforward. Oh, there we go. Uh, every every single mission that I've had has just been like driver from point A to point B, and now I'm getting turned around when the pressure's on. I apologize for that. Uh, let's not do this. Let's just go into the alley instead, and we'll sneak through here. And by the way, if you're wondering if you already own the game for yourself, and you're like, why the heck can't I jump? It's something that uh, becomes an ability after like the first section of the game. USA. U.S.A. Wait, where, where am I going? Oh boy. Alright, so now that that's done, um, I did Brack the Man beat me on that one? I would not be surprised if he did. After each mission, you get a report card that you can take a look at in case you want to, like, min-max. Uh, and you may, because it's got that arcade style, uh, kind of, you know, pseudo-charm to it. Uh, in any case, though, I think I've said my piece on Roundabout. It's a weird game, but it's a game that kind of speaks for itself, if that makes sense. In watching this, you probably already know whether or not this game is for you. Does this, uh, you know, spinning mechanic look like it would get perhaps tedious to you after a little while? Don't be ashamed of that. Oh, we got a special horn up here. Let's see what this is. Alright, so it's like a gurgle horn. That one's pretty good. I used to have one that was like... Dur -dur 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 -dur. I think it was like that anyway. Might have been, um, just a... You know, like an old school... Like, Model T Ford horn. Anyway, uh, does this, like, revolving gameplay look like it would get tedious to you after less than a few hours? You're not alone. I find myself occasionally be- I know it's, like, completely antithetical to the point of the game, but I find myself occasionally being, God, what I wouldn't give to just fucking drive straight. And, of course, this is- that's gotta be, like, a secret area, right? Um, maybe. There certainly seem to be stacks and stacks over here. Uh... Yeah, so don't be ashamed if that is you, because that is kind of, you know, where I find myself sometimes when I'm playing the game as well. But if you if you like the, uh, you know, the presentation style of what the game's got going on, sure, we'll buy the pier. Uh, and you, uh, don't think that you would find yourself graded by the, uh, very simplistic, not to say that it's not fun, uh, especially from time to time, but, uh, if you don't think you'd find yourself graded by this, then, you know, by all means, I would consider picking it up if I were you. It's not a must-buy purchase for, uh... Anybody that doesn't fit both of those criteria, but at 15 bucks, uh, I think you could definitely get uh, a couple of hours or a few hours out of, of enjoyment out of it. It seems it moves relatively briskly. Let's put it that way. Like the missions, uh, the the reason you're playing them is to see the cutscenes, and the missions themselves with the driving are like a minute or less each. So you can pretty quickly go from cutscene to cutscene and, and, and see what there is to see. Uh, so yeah, don't consider this a glowing recommendation for Roundabout, but I totally appreciate what it's doing from a, a tone perspective. Not 100% invested in the actual, uh, you know, revolving limo gameplay, which, as always, is gonna lead to claims that I just don't understand, you know, absurd fun, when that is actually totally what I'm all about. But, oh, you didn't like Goat Sim- I know I didn't like Goat Simulator, okay? I'm sorry about that. There must be a little piece of me that's dead inside. But, in any case, uh, I hope you, uh enjoyed the episode there will be a link to pick up roundabout the opening week sale is over but you can get it for 15 bucks on steam if you're interested as always uh thanks for watching if you enjoyed the episode click the like button it helps out a great deal and of course subscribe if you want to see more first impressions in the future but for now thanks for watching and i'll see you next time